Hello again, YouTubers. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Uh, once again, it is Sunday, and uh, hopefully, this should be probably the last Sunday I should actually review on my toy review video channel, though. Whatever it's called, though. But um, yes, um, sorry for taking so long, though, to be on this channel, though, because it's been, well, this week has been unprecedentedly hot. But luckily enough, today, as I'm making this video on Sunday, um, I'm sort of thinking maybe this could be the last, or maybe it wouldn't be the last toy view I ever make on my YouTube channel on Sunday because I'll be going back to do like the normal times where I can review every single day, like you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and particularly Sunday. That's that's the one I'm obviously doing now. But um, yes, I'm vlogging again. I can't believe it. And I don't know how many days I should vlog though because. Um, <laughs> Obviously, it does represent how many days I mean, it's been so hot so far, though. But um, I might be totally wrong, though, because, well, well, my vlogs don't have to represent, you know, and how hot the weather has been. Uh, luckily enough, the weather has gone cooler again. Tomorrow's going to be another warm day, maybe 25, 26, maybe 24 degrees Celsius. I can't tell, though. It's probably to do with the Northern Irish um, heat wave that we had recently, though. Um, but I think it's actually going to die now, that heat wave there, because I think on Tuesday of next week it's going to be unsettled, but I don't think we're going to get that much rain, because um, obviously the big problem is is that whenever you have no more rain, or little or no signs of rain now, you're going to get a drought. That's one of the saddest aspects about our summers like that. Even it dries you know, our, our patios, our, our gardens and stuff, and the plants don't have that much nutrients from the, the clouds and stuff. And speaking of clouds, I definitely say it's caused by excessive amounts of clouds. So if you have too much cloud, that's not going to basically properly form the amount of, you know, big, you know, pungent, you know, blackish greyish clouds that you see on the sky, though. I definitely say what we do need is a little bit more instability. And not only that, although we did have a lot of instability, um, there wasn't that much, you know, um, I have to say that I have to say that there was a bit too much clouds, but I think it's definitely the um, the way the low pressure must have been positioned, or in the sense that um, it could be something else. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I know just because low pressure brings in you know cool air doesn't exactly mean it's always wet. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm going to be doing a toy view. I initially thought I was going to be cancelling this toy view, but I've got four flip-flap products and one of them is like a flip-flap ponies product so I might probably start off this one here okay remember I did the swan boat that I did recently though now you've got Bonnie Dash uh, sunbathing at Saddle Lake Beach uh, it's a 5 pack £7.95 and uh, I'll just take a look at the back of the packaging uh, as you can see there's Bonnie Dash uh, chilling on the beach or in the lake because you know lakes are supposed to be inland beaches right it's like a rip off of Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony. I mean, when in the flipping heck am I actually just gonna stop talking of ponies? There'll be people thinking, oh, but you know what, I mean, the pony fandom is not that big anymore. Well, it has been, well, decreasing a lot though, obviously. But, anyways, I'm just gonna show you the key items first. Here we are, we've got Bonnie Dash, who's like your typical Pegasus uh, pony. I need to say Pokemon, eh? But, um,. Her wings, well, they just open like that. Okay, she's also got Q marks on each side. Fancy that. And she also comes with like a glasses. Okay, so if I place the glasses on um, Bonnie Dash, she'll be enjoying it in her merry way. Maybe I should have just left the um, computer off forever then. That way that would have stopped the computer from overheating but um, sadly I didn't because I was just busy on too much stuff but anyways there's her <laughs> wearing her sunglasses that's very um, rough and ready isn't it eh? and you've also got a dick chair which looks like that I think you're meant to sit Bonnie Dash with this one eh? but um, it actually is going to be quite you know, a bit hard for me eh? because I think well obviously I think the easier way is to Lift that tail up, up, just a bit upwards, eh? And then, could also sit Bonnie Dash on her deck chair. I believe that's like in the setting of the episode Too Many Pinkie Pies. 
quite weird, eh? That's a very nice um, design, eh? Oh, uh oh, Bonnie's just taking a dive. And then you've also got this pair of parasol. Well, it's a beach umbrella, that's what I call it there. Of course, it's like double components, eh? I'm not sure if it has a hole in that one. It's a very strange piece of. It looks like a very weird kirigami piece of paper has been cutting out to make look like it. Well, it's just made it to look like a bit of an um, an umbrella. It's sort of weird, but you get the picture. <laughs> but um, yes, it's actually quite a nice item there. You get you know blue, purple, green, and yellow. Sorry, I'm just you know reverse the colours oh, or mi mixed up all the colour orders and whatnot there, but. That's why I am, eh? But nevertheless, it looks quite nice. Actually, it does look like a Lego. You know, it looks like one of those Lego pieces there. Remember one of those? It actually does remind me of what Lego does their sets and stuff. And um, it's quite a bit sloppy, but I think Lego can pull a much better <laughs> component sort of toy uh, building sort of set like that one, eh? But um, that's just me. I suppose it doesn't look too bad. I suppose that uh, it's just a basic set, you know, just a very, very basic toy and whatnot. I suppose, eh? And strangely enough, I didn't release that much cigar products as I initially thought. And uh, we've actually run out of strip paper, so hopefully from tomorrow I should actually get some more strip paper and whatnot and stuff, which will be hopefully brilliant. Okay. And luckily enough, my dad has actually um, added some thermal compound onto my computer which is lo which is actually lovely and nice though because it helps to keep the computer cool on hot days. Uh, next part I'm just going to show you next is um, this one here. Uh, it's a juvenile common European styling um, post breeding large flock 12 pack. Cost about 13 pounds and there is the back of the packaging which looks like that. And yes you get like six um, obviously there's seven on the back and you have five on the front and so you get like well twelve six times two equals twelve <laughs> that's all I have to say eh? but um, these are the juvenile ones okay so let's take a look at what these um, juvenile starlings are going to be like though because I did take a look at the uh, adult ones and they were very hard to detail though because like you know I would hate to think of it but um, the, the juvenile ones they're a lot more simplistic than the adult ones because they don't have that much iridescent colours though. It's just a very weird tad of brown uh, colour though. And actually the starlings come in two different shades of brown, or varied shades of brown, because on the back of the packaging, there's actually that says... Oh, sorry, I plucked my nose, eh? Luckily I didn't touch the nostrils, so that would be very cringy and eerie. And uh, I actually notice as I'm reading it, it says, Colours may differ in models, or, or, or should I say, in model and artwork. Maybe I didn't see the letter S. Oh wait, did I see it? Um, oh no, it doesn't have the letter L S. It does have the letter L, but, um, oh well. Model and artwork, uh, oh well. Strange, sort of weird, um, semi-English uh, Text, I believe. But anyways, here's one of the starlings, the juvenile starlings. They come in different colours, and um, well, it's just the brown, which is makes, uh, which actually makes them a lot much more, um, you know, pretty common. Um, that's pretty much a very common thing with those starlings. I don't know what I was saying there, but um, maybe I was just saying words that didn't make any sense. And um, it's a, it's quite interesting. Some of them must have been done with. Um, just in a very normal fashion, like you know, colouring with just a regular pencil. But there are other options, like you know, they were doing it with watercolour. I suppose they have actually got the same sort of wing beak day. Because normally last year, I think last year when I did the starlings, I didn't think, uh, I don't think I had like um uh, the same sort of paper time. I think they had different paper day. Because then uh, you know, it's very very different day when you have different styles and whatnot. Eh? I suppose the wing detailing. I know we've got Trackmaster Luke in the background, but who cares? Anyways, uh, I know we've got, yeah, I know Luke is on the background pulling his train now. I love the eye detailing, which actually makes it a bit realistic as well, though. You know, with the eyes and the body in the in entirely similar sort of colour, I suppose. And then we have the other one here as well. 
funny and how Woody and Nick um, talked about this have been created so far. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, this is actually quite nice though, making um, toys like this. And I got a funny feeling, as I'm doing this toy view, uh, because it's summer outside there, it actually feels a, a bit like what I did last year there. Remember I did the vloggers toy view? I think I did one of those, the vloggers toy views I did back in August of 2020. It was pretty memorable, wasn't it, eh? But we've got the trains on the background, which is actually quite reminiscent of the video that I did with the H500 though on a hot summer's day. Um, but nevertheless, uh, today is much, much more of a cooler sort of day though because we have low pressure in it, of course. But uh, it's not raining though. I believe it could be like, you know, maybe I did see a, a few patches of drizzle. Maybe it was drizzling outside, I can't tell. But anyways, let's move on to another sort of product, and it's this one here. We've got the Crypto Parasitic Black Headed Girls versus Early Roosting Sandling Trio Flock 12 Pack. Now I actually thought sandlings weren't really the birds I've already chose, but maybe I have in previous uh, for that products though that I've made before way before this channel was made. Thirteen pounds ninety nine or fourteen pounds, and there's the back of the packaging. I eh? it looks like the sandlings are in their post. Breeding sort of plumage though. Well, obviously I think um, maybe the first individuals arrive in August. Maybe this could be set somewhere in, you know, in Norfolk. Maybe like Snatchisham, which is like the big RSPB reserve. Uh, in um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, eh? Is it like Northwest Norfolk? I'm pretty sure it's one of these places. I don't know if people just say, oh, it could be Norfolk, blah blah blah. Uh, but anyways, um, the fishies that we get though, uh, we get like three of those pilchards. It's nice that we're actually getting a bit more of a realistic sort of theme on these fishies, uh, looking a lot more like realistic pilchards than um, the ones I did before, which would look like, um, remember Wishy Washy from Pokemon? Uh, it, was, it was just totally um, stupid to just copy and paste from some other franchise and whatnot though, like you know, if I copied a fish Pokemon like Magikarp or Wishy Washy, that will get me in trouble because of copyright infringement. And there are the prawns, looking a lot more well, a lot more made up in a very good manner though, because it's best not to copy others, isn't it? <laughs> no, not really at all. So uh, I know the pilcher looked very very similar to what I did. These days and my fingers are itching. I don't know why. Uh, but let's take a look at the black headed seagulls here first. We're going to be taking a look at this one here. Uh, I suppose the, the term cut the parasitic is like one animal trying to steal another animal's um, prey. Well, obviously, that's the main thing I've actually realised. It's a bit, a bit like competition, I suppose, eh? Um, or maybe something to do with um, the bird, you know, the, the bird that has been cut to parasitic being malicious. Uh, whereas the other one's being innocent. The one that's already caught its prey there. And uh, there you go, there's the wings on the front. It's got those brown streakings on the front. There's none at the back there. Actually, on the half, I suppose, eh? The back half, I suppose. Uh, it's got the black tail end, which is nice. Okay, so um, it's pretty fine and super dandy. And hey, I actually do love uh, the detailing on this bird. It actually makes it what a, um, a first winter bird would look like, though. Strange, isn't it, eh? Because we've also got like this one here, I believe. Oh, you remember when I did videos like this before? I think this is the most common, one of the mo more common sort of forms of black headed gull. Because in the winter, you get like, you know, the winter plumage sort of black headed gulls, and you get like ones which have like the, um, you know, the sort of headphone markings there, these dark browny patches, and they've still got like, you know, Pretty much the result from the feather molting after breeding, I suppose. It's a non breeding type plumage, though, that they always do in late summer. And uh, they always keep that feather plumage throughout autumn and winter and also spring, early spring being March and onwards, until like they become this, which is they. Uh, um, well, they often get these, um, these sort of head plumages like that. And I think um, they can actually have those sort of. Uh, chocolate brown sort of plumages like that from like you know December, maybe as early as November, December, 
and I think um, it could be January or February there. Okay, and then they, yeah, they actually um, let their hoods, the you know, the 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 brown hood that I'm talking about, they just disappear shortly after breeding, like you know, in August, you know, late July and early August. There you go. It looks pretty reminiscent, I suppose, eh? Mind you, I definitely say we might get more of these rather than, you know, those ones there of the dark chocolate brown heads. Hopefully, I suppose, eh? And uh, this one here. It is a sandling. You can tell it's a sandling because, well, it's basically a wider design. Here you go. Is its name sandling winter? Oh wait, sorry, it's summer plumage. Why do I even get confused for the fact that sandlings are wintering birds? Um, sandlings, I think they would actually prefer to eat prawns, though, rather than fish. And strange enough, uh, do I hear an airplane outside? I can't really tell. Eh? But uh, anyways. Now those are the sandlings though, they do look very similar to the um, the starlings that I did there. There you go, it's very weird though, the eyes have got like thin lines and stuff. And here's another one of those which looks pretty interesting I suppose. And um, you know what, it's actually not too bad. Okay, so in the way I designed these toys, it's actually not too bad and if I keep on flapping this model here, and I actually love the unusual design on the tail as well. It gives it a bit more of a wedgy ramp sort of design, though. There you go. There's the black tail end on the sandling. It still is brown because it's more of a, a, a post-summer breeding plumage sort of bird, though. That's heading for its wintering ground. Normally, I'd definitely say that um, sandlings um, they are actually quite silvery, though, and they actually grow in big, big numbers along with the um, the knots, the dunlins, and all the other. Why it is. Of course, yes, um, I definitely say sandlings are closely related to little stints, dunlins, knots, and, um, yeah, of course the sandlings themselves, though, they're pretty much related. They belong to the same genus called Caledry. I can't remember, it's, I'm pretty sure that's the right name, Caledry. Please correct me, um, ornithologists, if I'm getting the name wrong, though, <laughs> oh my goodness me. Uh, please correct me there. Actually, uh, that pen's running out there. Um, that's supposed to be that Latin name there. You know what I mean? Caledry. I think that's the um, name for those sand piping birds. And I think our last, but by no means least, part we're going to take a look at is the Flip Up Origami British Wild Collection Flapping Birds. Oh, sorry, I just should have said flapping birds first and then British Wild Collection. Next, it's called the Inland Seabird! Kleptoparasitism. Oh my goodness, we're having the same theme, aren't we? Of Kleptoparasitism. Am I saying it right there? Kleptoparasitism. Yes, that's the right way of saying that word, eh? And mixed species feeding, or should I say fishing frenzy, chase 12 pack. And uh, it costs about £12.99 or £13. And at the back of the packaging, yeah, it looks like we've got a uh, common tern uh, fishing there, but he's surrounded by a few gulls there. You get a black headed one and a herring gull. Maybe I should make a lot more of the bigger uh, and more brutal looking herring and lesser black back gulls because um, I keep on hearing them all the time. You know? uh, the fishies that we get there are minnows. I hope they're minnows, eh? Because um, I think there's one other common species of freshwater fish I, you know, I obviously encounter all the time, and that's the um, the what's it called? The is it the stickleback? I'm pretty sure it's the stickleback. So, but anyways, I'm just going to show you the um, minnows, and not minions. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of, eh? There you go. It looks quite nice, eh? Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly there, but they've got like a red mouth or a red lip. Oh, that's nice, eh? That camera is actually doing really nicely, though. If I hold it gently, then if I wait for a while, eh? That will easily focus better, eh? I mean, I love the way that these toys have been designed, though. I mean, wow! This is actually better than what I initially thought. Okay, so maybe, you know, in the toy aisle, I could literally just be as, well, as creative as I can be. And strangely enough, uh, I don't know in July, I don't think I produced any road vehicles, which is a bit disappointing. Um, you know what I mean, but um, that's why I didn't produce any trucks or buses. Uh, maybe I should try and do that in another video, eh? Of course, the fishies are compatible, though, for the um, the birds when you put them in the beaks and whatnot, though. 
and stuff like that one, eh? Okay, once again, we're going to show you the black-headed doll here first. It's actually made in, um, is it made in a different sort of paper, eh? Yeah, it's a much more thinner sort of paper. It's a little bit, um, different there, the paper on one another. It's a little bit thin, that sort of paper I've made with these, um, birds, I suppose. And then you've also got the other one as well. Obviously you get two each of those birds and whatnot and stuff. Pretty um, delicate though. And um, we've also got one of these common turns though. But there's actually a problem with this one here. Because I can see what I can actually see is a bit of a rip. There's a bit of ripping there which is not very, very good. Oh my goodness me. I don't know why I'm trying to cut that one out. But this bird actually had a rip. It was ripping itself, so I tried to cut it so that I don't want to see the rip. Uh, but anyways, this is a common turn. There's no wingtips there. I think the reason why I made common turns is because I saw them at Middleton Lakes, which is a very nice thing to see. And then look at that, we've also got some pipe cleaners as the um, swallowtail uh, design. Eh? Maybe I should try and do this uh, with the, um, the barn. I should probably make more barn swallow products there eh? because. Maybe I haven't made that much there as I initially thought I would actually expect, eh? But this is chronically nice, I have to say, eh? Chronically nice. I love the, um, you know, the swallowtail ends and stuff. The beak colorization is good. Same with the eyes. Well done. This is really amazing. I have to say, um, quite interesting. I didn't see any common turns at Ellswood Lakes because, uh, well, obviously there's been loads and loads of roadworks and renovations and whatnot though, sorry if I'm just positioning it quite roughly though because well obviously there's something weird on my head has gone a bit quite strange there. My you know my pinky finger's itchy day. It's just sort of moving like that. Hello. Um anyways it looks quite nice eh? Well, I love the um, the black cap feature eh? Not, obviously I'm mentioning the black cap which is a, a species of warbler. A small bird, or if we're going to call it, I suppose, eh? Lovely design on that um, common turn. Looks quite cool, eh? And we've also got a couple of herring gulls as well, there, because, you know, herring gulls. I mean, I've got two of these. And luckily enough, um, the, the herring gulls in the artwork, they actually don't look like wing gull in Pokemon, eh? And luckily enough, I should probably start behaving better there by just not copying Pokemon and just drawing my own entity in the way I draw and design birds and stuff. That would be a brilliant idea, isn't it? Eh? Wouldn't it? It actually does sound quite nice to be in that manner, eh? And um, I think that's about it in this video, eh? Because, well, obviously, that was a bit of a an easy toy view to do, though, because I'm vlogging here, which is quite nice, I suppose. Hopefully I should, you know, I should actually do more of these, I suppose. But uh, anyways, if you really enjoyed this video, um, please give this video a like, subscribe to my, you know, please like the channel though, subscribe to my YouTube channel for uh, more content. And uh, this video took a bit, uh, you know, a bit of a while to um, produce because, well, I was about to cancel it, but uh, and she thought, wow, since that computer has been fixed for my dad though, thanks a lot. Thanks to my dad on, you know, pretty much adding a lot more thermal compounds to keep the computer cool and stuff like that one, I. But anyways, I think that's about it though, so thanks for watching and bye for now.